herpes virus. This lecture will be made super easy in three important points. The point number one, the types of the herpes virus. The point number two is about the structure of the herpes virus. And the third point is about the life cycle or replication of the herpes virus. Let us discuss each point in a very simple and easy way. The point number one is the types of the herpes virus. There are several types of the herpes virus, but today we'll talk about those viruses that are responsible to cause disease in humans. And in those, again, we have several types, but most commonly known is herpes simplex type one and herpes simplex type two. Very important and commonly causing diseases in human. So we have actually two very commonly known viruses that are simplex virus type one and type two. The next point, the structure of the herpes virus. Very easy. This virus has a DNA which is covered by a protein layer known as capsid. This capsid in some textbooks is given the name nucleocapsid and in some other textbooks these both are marked by a single name that is nucleocapsid. Now what is this nucleocapsid term? Very simple. DNA and RNA. They are named as nucleic acids. Now just take the term nucleo from the nucleic acid and combine that term with the capsid. So we'll have the next term that is the nucleocapsid. So you can fix this term for only this capsid and you can also use for both of these collectively. Means collectively these are known as nucleocapsid. Hope you got the next layer. Again it is of proteins and that is the tagament protein. Remember, we do have several other proteins here that are not marked in the textbooks, but that are taught while we are studying the life cycle or replication. So remember that along with tagament proteins, we do have some other proteins like VHS and VP16. We'll come towards those proteins. Coming to the point. Now these proteins cover this nucleocapsid. Now I'm using the nucleocapsid term for both the DNA capsid. Now what is the job of this protein next? Very simple, this is actually responsible to hold this lipid bilayer, the last one, okay, the last one. Lipid bilayer, it actually holds this lipid bilayer. Now this lipid bilayer is the one that is actually known as envelope, okay, envelope. Like this, our discussion completes regarding the structure of the herpes virus. Uh, you can also use this structure for uh, the introduction of the herpes virus, okay. In the third point, we'll talk about the life cycle or replication. Let's discuss. Now what is going to happen? Very simple. Here is uh, the same herpes virus, the rough structure of this virus. Uh, here we have the envelope, then we have proteins, those tegument proteins and some other breeze proteins. And then we have the capsid. After that, there is the DNA. Now what happens? Just concentrate. This virus will enter the targeted cell. Now as this virus starts entering, its envelope will remain outside and the remaining proteins, capsid and DNA will enter. Now what will happen? The proteins will go and they will do directions and this capsid along with the DNA, they will start moving towards the nucleus of the host cell. Okay, this is host cell and they will have a path on which they will travel. That path is known as the path of the microtubules. Means here, the microtubules are actually providing the path for these uh, DNA and capsids, okay? Now, they will start moving. As they reach the nucleus, the capsid will re be removed and the DNA only will move into the nucleus of the host cell. Now here we have host DNA and the new DNA which is the viral DNA. They both will fuse together and they will synthesize only one DNA that it is actually the fused DNA. Now this became just one DNA, fused DNA. Now this DNA is responsible to undergo the process of transcription. You know, the DNA when they are present in the cell, they are responsible to transcribe, to synthesize messenger RNA. Then those messenger RNA will move towards the ribosomes. They will translate into proteins at the end. Now what's happening here, here we have actually two important logics. I will explain both, okay? The very first logic, what is going to happen? This DNA will be transcribed into the messenger RNA and in the meanwhile, this DNA will transcribe the genomic DNA. RNA and DNA both are 
synthesized okay first of all messenger rna will be synthesized then the gmic dna will be synthesized now what is going to happen very simple messenger rna will come towards the ribosomes it will translate and proteins will be synthesized and from here the genomic dna is coming and what will happen after that proteins are synthesized now these proteins remember these are all those proteins which are responsible and needed for this entire virus you can see we need capsule proteins tegument proteins these all proteins etc etc proteins now all the proteins will be synthesized at the end and from here the genomic dna is coming what will happen simple dna capsid proteins they will assemble after that the packaging will be done and at the end they will be released with having an envelope from the host cell means they will take the envelope at the end from the host cell like this the virus is available and free to go and find another cell and inject in that another cell and to destroy that cell also this is one logic second logic very simple this uh, fused dna will transcribed into a messenger rna only messenger rna not the genomic dna it won't be uh, synthesized okay now this messenger rna will come and they will find the ribosomes where it will translate into proteins now here several proteins will be synthesized all these proteins you know which are actually needed for the virus and what next happens that is one of the proteins named as dna polymerase that will come to the nucleus and here it will find this dna and after that it will synthesize the genomic dna from this fused dna and at the end what will happen proteins are already available some of the proteins and now this genomic dna is synthesized it will come again and assembly will be done of the dna and proteins and after that packaging will be done is required like a uh, packaging will be in sense of uh, first of all dna will come all the dna is synthesized they will come uh, then specific capsids will wrap those dna's then proteins will come after that as they are releasing from the cell they will take the envelope from the cell and will come and will find another cell and will inject into that cell now two points are remaining the functions of the vhs and vp60 virion host shut off now this is actually responsible to shut off the host cell rna now this is the rna of the host so in the meanwhile we will be having two rnas one of the host and one of the this virus one okay so what will happen vhs will go and will block the path of the host rna it will destroy those host rnas and what will happen then if these are destroyed very simple just concentrate in the meanwhile if two rnas are coming towards the ribosomes one of the host or one of the virus so then the competition will be enough hard in order to decrease that competition these virion host shut off will target these host rna and will destroy these host rna like this the competition will be decreased and then only viral messenger rna will come and they will show their actions okay proteins with this will they will come and they will be translated and they will synthesize the proteins and vp16 what's its job now it is responsible to protect the viral rna okay we have two rnas messenger and viral vhs will destroy the messenger rna of the host and like this the competition will be decreased and vp16 will further help this messenger rna it will protect this messenger rna which is actually of the virus which is having the information for the virus okay that will come and at the end that will be uh, translated into to proteins and you got what will happen after the proteins are synthesized then those dna will combine with the proteins they will package they will release and like this they will be free again to go and find another cells